On May 4, 2008, Bishop Jean-Michel de Falco, on approving the apparitions of Our Lady in Laos, declared that this was the first apparition of Our Lady in the 21st century and the first in France since the 19th century to be approved by the Church. This is the uh, decree that was signed by Bishop de Falco on May 4, 2008. Precious family, we're here in the French Alps with the best kept secret for 400 years. Our Lady, Refuge of Sinners. It's a sanctuary, a shrine to Our Lady, Refuge of Sinners, a place to come and to shed everything that separates you from our Lord. So come with us as we bring you to the shrine of Our Lady of Laos. Family, we're here with Father Ludwig Freyer, which means brother in, uh, in English. And interestingly enough, he has just become the rector of this, uh, this shrine. And so we're, we're excited about meeting him, and he's excited about us coming. And we, we wanted to share with us some of the highlights of the shrine, and especially the, uh, the event that, uh, that brought it to full approval of the church in 2008 on May the 4th. And so, Father, we, we thank you for, for coming and visiting with us, and we'd like to ask you a couple of questions. It, the, the one thought, I always do this, the one thought that kept going through my mind and my heart is that Our Lady has a reason. Uh -huh. She brought you yes, to it. Yes. yes, and it's very now. Uh -huh. She wants to reach her children now. We don't have a blessed Benoit here with us, but spiritually she remains. And she will be a role model to young women all over the world, and especially to those in the United States, mm -hmm. to be proud of who they are. Yeah. And so um, we're excited. Now, and Father, have you had a devotion to Our Lady? How do you pronounce yes. it in French? Lo? Lo, Lo, Notre Dame du Lo. Notre Dame du Lo. Lady of the Lake. Of the Lake, yes. Lo is the Lake. Lady of the Lake. It's pronounced not L A U S, but it's pronounced Lo. Notre Dame du Lo. Notre Dame du Lo. Have you had a devotion to her in your lifetime? I didn't know very far because I'm not from the Hautes Alpes. It's the 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 region we are we are here in the country, but I have a devotion for Mary, of course. Wonderful. And. When I, I came to, to the law, I understand with a word of Mary who said, I asked the law of, of my son, yeah. and he gave me the law for the conversion of sinners. And with these little words, we understand what means Notre Dame du Law. It's for conversion of sinners, yeah. and Mary wanted it for the conversion of I sinners. Now, we, we do understand that uh, a great part of the, uh, the uh, devotion here is, or what Our Lady had wanted was refuge of sinners, reconciliation, yes. and people have come. This has become a great shrine of reconciliation. There were also problems in, in France and in Europe about uh, confession, but here we have uh, seven hours of confession for a day, and there is always, always people that people. come Praise because uh, it's a particular um, uh, place to confession. Yes. We say here in the law we have reconciliation between with God, with ourselves, mm -hmm. and with the others. Praise mm -hmm. God. Yes, and that's have really you, important. Mm -hmm. uh, have we, you visited here since you were given the, this new position? Have you visited to see what goes on here, what happens here, the processions, or any, have you seen any of those? Things? Yes, there are a lot of procession, uh, prayer, uh, doing all the day with uh, Sisters of Montmartre. It's a congregation that uh, comes from Paris uh -huh. and came to the sanctuary to help us to pray. Okay. And there is a lot of rosary. Uh, three was a week a day, and uh, every day, every day, yes. Praise uh -huh. God. And confession every day. And confession seven 
hours uh, every day. Seven hours yes. every day. Yes. Confession here, uh, rosary three times a day. We're in heaven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It does not get better than this. Family, we're here at a little village called Saint, Saint Etienne de Laos, which is actually five kilometers uh, from the uh, shrine of Our Lady of Laos. But this is where Our Lady first appeared to Benoit Recurel. Recurel. Uh, strangely enough, she came here to her. This was a little chapel, Notre Dame de Four. And, and Benoit would come here to pray a lot. And Our Lady appeared to her, and uh, she was very cute. She said, would you like something to eat? I have some bread, we can dip it in the water and soften up the bread. Our Lady said, you know, I, I want to speak to you. I have great things to tell you, but I won't come back here. You have to go to Laos, to uh, the chapel of Notre Dame de Bon du Recontre, which is Our Lady of the Encounter. And uh, so, you know, it doesn't seem like a big deal. She did this for years, for about three or four years. She went every day from here to there, which is about five kilometers, but it's also mountainous five kilometers. I mean, it was, it was not the greatest thing trying to get from here to there, and she did it every day. Just the idea of being able to be in the presence of the Blessed Mother she would go anywhere to do it. I think any of us would. If Our Lady came to any of us and said, okay, you're gonna have to walk up three mountains to get to see me next time and I want you to go there, we would probably do it. Well, this dear Benoit uh, started a relationship here with Our Lady, which never ended. It lasted 54 years. It's the longest uh, apparition Our Lady ever has made of approved apparitions in the church. And this is where it all began. Family, uh, she appeared to uh, Benoit over there at the Valley of the Fours, Valley of the Kiln, for four months. And then one day, uh, Benoit, from that distance over there, could see a great light over here where you see the statue of Our Lady and her speaking. But she walked with her, with her sheep and her goat to this place, and Our Lady was there. Now, in order to get there, she had to climb on top of the goat's back in order to cross the river because she couldn't wade across the river by herself. And so uh, you know, they had a sort of a cute relationship. She said to her, will you, will you give me your sheep? And uh, Benoit says, okay, will you give me your goat? I can't give you my goat. I need the goat to get me across the river. So they had, and of course, Mary did not want the sheep. She just wanted to know that she would be willing to do this. Well, the first time that she had appeared to her over there at the Valley of the Horse with the child Jesus, she said, that is a really pretty child. Can we have him? And so Our Lady allowed her to, to hold the child. And then at some given point, she got up, picked up the child and left. But they were there, they were together for hours. So here, they came to this place and so this would have been the second location that Our Lady appeared to Benoit. And then the last location, or the major location, would be where the shrine is today. The very next day, Benoit came to the place which is today the shrine of Our Lady of Laos and saw Our Lady there. Now at first she had a very difficult time trying to find it but she did smell a sweet fragrance and saw a door that was left ajar. Entering, she found her beautiful lady standing on a dust-covered altar. Honorable lady, would you like me to spread my apron under your feet? It is very white. No, soon nothing will be lacking here, neither vestments, nor altar linens, nor candles. Here, many sinners will be converted. I will appear to you often here. The virgin told Benoit, I asked my son for Laos for the conversion of sinners, and he has granted it to me. For four years, Benoit went back and forth five kilometers from her home to the shrine of Our Lady of Laos 
until finally she moved up to the shrine into this house, which is called Bethany. Here she lived until the day she died on December the 28th, 1718. During this time when she lived in this house, she was threatened with excommunication any priest who celebrated mass in the chapel. They also posted a sign on the church door at Lao forbidding public devotions on the site. The Blessed Virgin, on the other hand, commanded Benoit remove that paper and let mass be said there here as it was before. And she was obeyed. The apparitions at Laos and Benoit were to meet with much hostility over the next 20 years. The bishop, now old and in a weakened state, appointed two chaplains who were not in favor of Laos and turned the faithful away. And for 15 years, Benoit was kept under house arrest, permitted only Sunday mass. Benoit's fidelity triumphed over this long eclipse of Laos. At long last, the Bishop of Arun uh, opened up the shrine. In 1712, six years before Benoit's death, the direction of the pilgrimage was entrusted to some good priests called the Père Gadistes, a deeply religious group of sound doctrine moved by an ardent desire for the apostolate. Our Lady had won out over her enemies. On Christmas Day, 1718, she came down with a high fever. She asked for a holy viaticum. The Paragadis prayed for her cure. Two more years, Lord, they implored. But on December the 28th, she received the last sacraments at three in the afternoon, and she died in the peace of Our Lady. Family, we're here at a, a place called the Cross of Avanson. It's up in back of me here. Uh, and this was a place that Benoit would come not far from the, from the uh, side of the apparitions, maybe a kilometer down the road. And she would pray here, meditate on the passion of Christ. She had a great devotion to Jesus crucified. And so uh, our Lord Jesus allowed her to see him. He appeared to her so that she could understand the problem, the, uh, understand the passion of Christ. In fact, she would say to him, oh, Jesus, I, I, I want to see you like this. I could die. And her guardian angel said, no, no, don't, don't be concerned. He just wants you to understand what he has gone through for the conversion of sinners. And as an additional gift on July 7th in 1673, she was given the gift of a mystical passion of Christ. She suffered from Thursday, every Thursday to Friday evening for 15 years, the mystical crucifixion. And it was actually, she could actually feel the pains of the passion and the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. It was only a two year period where she didn't uh, have that. It was when she was busy uh, feeding the workers who were building the priest's house up at the shrine. But then again, it, it continued and she would come back down here to the cross of Amazon in her, her uh, mystical um, passion and, and mystical passion of Christ would continue on altogether for 15 years. I mean, it was just a beautiful time for her, just her and our Lord Jesus alone. And she was, she was allowed to experience what he was going through. It's, it's just another beautiful part of this story, a part of this tradition. Now, you know, Benoit, Benoit, how do you pronounce her last name? Benoit, yeah, but, Benoit. Uh, okay. She was beatified in 1984, was it? I'm trying to remember. She was what? Beatified. Ah, oh, she's still not beatified. She's not beatified. We yet. are waiting for the beatification. If you can pray for the oh, beatification. We will. Okay. Um, we have uh, a job. All is finished. Yes. We are waiting for a miracle. A, a miracle. miracle. Yes. There is okay. one miracle that is uh, studying by uh, medicine doctors, yeah. Yeah. but we are waiting for a miracle, and after. Sure, uh, Benoit will be beatified. Oh, that'll be, that'll be yes. wonderful. Well, 
you know what you have to do. You have to pray. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> pray for the beatification of that And life. it's so exciting. What other church in the world would you have an opportunity to pray for help from someone and through that process help them to become blessed mm -hmm. and saints? And we have a part of it. It's not something that happens by itself. Now, the apparitions to, once this had been approved by the church, the apparitions here are the longest that Mother Mary has ever made, 54, 54, uh, 54 years. We don't have yes. anything like uh -huh. that in the church, 54 uh -huh. years. But more than apparition, yes, they are really apparition, but it means that uh, Mary um, stay with Benoit. Oh, Always right. yes. helping her, being Guiding more her. and more uh, for God. Yes. yes, Guiding her and teaching her. Yes. yes. Very uh -huh. important. Yes. Um, I think that the reason that this has remained alive is because of what Mother Mary authentically taught uh, Benoit and which she passed on. So the teaching is here. Yes. This is just not a phenomena. Mm -hmm. And 54 years of insights, and uh, we can all study these insights. None of us are too young, like myself, or too old. Like myself. <laughs> and, and you know, an interesting thing in reading in, of her life is uh, she was given the gift of being able to discern when uh, somebody was in sin. Yes. <laughs> and she would say, Get away from the altar, go to confession, go to confession. And this area of uh, the Alps, I guess you would call it Haute Alp. Haute Alp. Uh, if you include St. Jean Vianney mm -hmm. and Our Lady of La Salette and Our Lady of La, the focus of all these people were reconciliation, confession of, I mean, Father uh, Jean Vianney would spend 18 hours, 16 hours a day in the confessional. And, and, and uh, I, I know that Our Lady of La Salette would keep saying, but you will change all this. She would tell the bishop, she'd be crying, she'd, but you will change all this. And the priests realized that what she was saying is, we need to have reconciliation. And here, the same focus. I think we have today to say to, to the world, change your heart. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, us and Notre Dame du Lot and La Salette says only that. Yes. Change your heart to be, to be for God because uh, the, the, the real life is uh, in Jesus. And you'll be happy. Yes. There's happy, there's joy in that. Mm -hmm. It's important. And if you allow the Lord to change your heart, then when you hear something and you are being led away from God, you, will, you can't go. You can't go because it does create a problem for you because you have been shown the light. We, uh, uh, our uh, uh, conference this year at the mission is out of the darkness into the, into light. the light. Out of the mm -hmm. darkness into and the light. And this is what I believe is this here. program is about. Out, out of, of the, the darkness, darkness into, into the, the light. light. This has been going on for 400 years. And you have to see, well, you're going to see, that has been building. Uh, no one lost uh, interest, uh, no one neglected it, uh, it wasn't a, an old shoe sort of thing. No, there's an excitement here, and everyone who works here is so committed. Among many other saints, St. Peter Julian Amard, founder of the Blessed Sacrament Fathers, had a deep devotion to Our Lady of Laos. When he was scarcely 11 years old, he pilgrimaged to uh, the shrine and spent nine days at the shrine in preparation for his first Holy Communion. He said later, this is where I first came to know and love Mary. Peter Julian had a great devotion for his good mother of Laos all his life. In times of unbelievable fatigue, he would rush to retire to that shrine. 
and mass was celebrated in honor of the, the, the rector who was leaving and the installation of the new rector who we interviewed here at the shrine. Monsignor, Monsignor Jean-Michel de Falco Leandri. He is the Bishop of Gap et Brun, and he is the force behind having this shrine approved by the church. And we are really excited, Your Excellency, to show this program to the English-speaking world. We have two questions we would like to ask you. Now, it's only in the last two years that we in America have heard about this sanctuary. Uh, when you became bishop in 2004, you immediately began work for the approval, church approval of the shrine. Was it, was it very important to you? Actually, since the 17th century, since 1664, pilgrims frequented this site. And the frequenting of the site resulted in the fact that none of my predecessors thought it necessary to take the initiative to recognize the supernatural character of what took place here. However, when I went to Rome to open the file for the beatification of Benoit Rencorel, the clairvoyant, the congregation responsible for advancing the cause of the saints indicated to me that there had never yet been any uh, official recognition Whereas regarding the beatification process, such a step was necessary. That is to say, if the bishop thought it was best for the sanctuary as well as for the diocese, he should recognize the supernatural character of the events that had taken place at this time. So I, as the bishop of the diocese, took the steps necessary to have the shrine authenticated by the church in the year 2008. Okay. Do you have anything you would like to say to the people of the United States? Yes. Come to the law, <laughs> and you will see how will it is. Here. Come, come. come. Yes. Rather than watch a program, come and be here in person and see it for yourself. <laughs> yes. Well, this is just a preliminary. This is giving you a little taste, the way we do when it's fine culinary. Just a little taste, and it makes you want to come, to come more. Um, as we have told you, as we're looking over our books that we have written over the years and our programs over the years, all Bob Hughes, <laughs> oh, bless you, it's been written for today. And here we are making a program that's been in existence 400 years, 
we've been doing this work for over 30 years and have not heard of this? Why now? Why now? And you know something? It's for you. Because Jesus and Mary love you. So let Mary place you on her lap and teach you like when you were a child. Let her love you with a mother's heart so that you can get to know her precious son, our Lord Jesus. And do what she tells you. All the world needs a mother. Yes, of course. Everyone has this need. As everyone needs a mother, and I think that the role that a mother can play, and Mary plays it out in the most sweeping way. I think that generosity is what gives strength to a mother's love, the act of giving freely. And I think that no one in the life of a man or a woman can love like a mother can love. And I think that we attempt to recapture this selfless love when we give our love to the Virgin Mary. Voilà. Merci. Merci à vous. Vous rentrez, vous repartez quand? Father, would, could you give our people a blessing? Could you give them yes, a blessing? Yes, it's a pleasure. At the end of the program, yes. we will put this blessing at the end of the program. I don't know if I, I, I know the, the words in English, say but it, uh, say them I can it in French, okay? okay? Oh, they love it. It's a luck. We love the blessing sound of French. <laughs> <laughs> Le Seigneur soit avec vous et avec votre esprit. Que Dieu Tout-Puissant vous bénisse. Mm -hmm. Au nom du Père, du Fils et du Saint-Esprit. Amen.